Hey guys, even here and in this video, you're gonna try to determine what is the potential of Martin Fitzwater or to answer the question whether he can crack the top 10 at the Mr. Olympia this year. Right here, you're looking at his posing routine from the pre-judging of the Detroit Pro, the show which he won against Guduito. It was a tough top two call out. At the finals, Martin got even sharper and this video is from the pre-judging. So he was a little bit sharper even, but honestly, I was really impressed with his physique. However, I did notice some comments saying that Gudwito was robbed, that he is the one who should have won this show, I disagree with that, mainly because of this right here, Martin's back and his back poses, it's a rare sight to be seen, not a lot of bodybuilders have back this complete, this full and thick and round and complete and this conditioning from behind and the glutes and everything, like this is pretty rare. From the front, you could make an argument that Gudwito was better. He was really sharp, really detailed, and you know he had a really great wee taper. And you know I can see, I can see an argument for Gudwito winning because his front shots potentially have been more detailed, sharper. But again, because of the back, I think Martin edged him out. And I'm not saying that. Gudwito doesn't have great potential, I already made a video about him and his potential actually, I just feel like at this show Martin was more dominant and I think these guys are about the same age, at least I know that Martin is 27 right now, so he's a very very young guy, there is a bright future ahead of him if he stays focused, if he is determined and if he continues making progress at the same rate he was making it so far. Here is a very interesting comparison between his 2022 Texas Pro version compared to the Detroit Pro 24, and I gotta say, he definitely did improve a lot, especially, especially in those freaking arms. Check out the biceps, especially the left one, I mean the right one too, and the triceps, which are hanging lower, biceps are more bulging, uh, I don't know if he may have done something to them, because this kind of progress, I don't know how realistic it is for biceps, such a small body part, to grow so much, while the rest of his body kind of stayed pretty much the same, you know what I'm saying, if he was eating a ton of food and training like a maniac and like taking a lot of gear, he would grow everywhere, but really... I mean, yeah, he got a little bit better everywhere, but nothing really grew dramatically, and his arms did, his arms did grow dramatically, and I'm not really noticing any details, any new fibers, they are looking pretty smooth, so I think he did something to them. But the question is, does it really matter? If you don't notice it right away when he's on the stage, if you need this comparison photo to realize that, it doesn't matter, and also, like, it's not easy to do that stuff, I mean, imagine, guys, yourself, imagine putting a needle in your biceps, you know, it's also a lot of hard work, <laughs> you truly need to be willing to do whatever it takes, you know, it's, it's a crazy mentality, you really need to have the guts to do something like that, and then again, also, maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is just bicep progression, normal, natural progression, without any uh, sight enhancement, I really doubt that, but maybe I'm wrong, anyways, the progression he made was pretty good, it's not just his arms, overall he was just a little bit better, he was, he had more quality, right, and again, he's very young, he's only 27, and I don't think he was really focused, really devoted in his off-season between these two shows, if he truly gave it 100% in a couple of years, I think this guy could be really, really good. Now, if you talk about the Mr. Olympia this year, 2024, which he is qualified for, the discussion would be, is he a top 10 material? Can he crack the top 10? I think a pretty good way of concluding that is by comparing him to last year's 8th place finisher, Tonio Burton. Now, Tonio was 8th, and Regan Grimes was ninth, and the 10th was Charles Griffin, now, if Martin, the way he looked at this Detroit Pro, was teleported to the Mr. Olympia 2023, I think he would place inside of the top 10, I think he would beat either only Charles Griffin or Regan Grimes too, but as far as beating Tonio Burton, I'm not so sure about that one, 
In my last video, I said that if Tonio showed up at this show, he would lose against Martin and Gudvito. But I might have to take that back. Let's take a look at this comparison right here. So, Tonio, I think he was a little bit drier, you know, and he had a crispy, detailed, separated look. Martin had that crazy fullness and bubbliness, but I mean, Tonio was also pretty full and bubbly. They are about similar height, but I think right now, at their point in their career, I feel like Tonio maybe has more of that maturity, that grainy look, that, let's say, completeness. Tonio was really shredded at the Arnold Classic Brazil, and Tonio's back is probably his best body part. I mean, look at it right here. Martin's back is really outstanding, but is it better than Tonio's? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I think Tonio's back is potentially better. However, lower body, I give it to Martin. His legs are just rounder, more detailed, kind of wider, thicker. So, I don't know. This one is very, very close. But I think I am changing my mind. I think Tonio would still beat Martin. We'll see at the Mr. Olympia. Maybe Martin can improve a little bit more. But comparing their last looks, I think I would give a slight edge to Tonio, which kind of puts Martin in a ninth position of the Mr. Olympia, but that's last year's Mr. Olympia. This year, we have Nick Walker entering, Big Ramy as well, maybe Nathan Diasha qualifies, maybe Bekros Tabani as well. So this year, cracking the top 10 is going to be an extremely difficult task for anybody, any of these guys. Hassan Mustafa is doing, I believe, Toronto Pro, and maybe Quinton Araya is going to choose that show because, again, he wants to actually qualify for the Mr. Olympia. There is no point for him to do the New York Pro just to you know, compete against Nick Walker. If he wants the qualification, Toronto Pro is a good choice. So, yeah, we're going to have an entrance of many bodybuilders. However, some might not even be able to qualify, so maybe it's going to come down to the same. So, again, can Martin Fitzwater place in the top 10? I think he is a top 10 material. Now, let's address his Mr. Olympia future potential. I've seen a whole bunch of these kind of comparisons and like comments, a lot of comments on this topic that Martin Fitzwater kind of looks like Phil Heath uh, back when he was not a Mr. Olympia, I think 2008, something like that. So I gotta say, there are certain similarities, especially in this shot right here. Like the waist size and the way the lats are flaring out. The legs, the legs mainly. So maybe, maybe there is some sort of potential for Martin Fitzwater to achieve something similar to what Phil Heath achieved. Now, I'm not saying that he's as good as Phil Heath, nor that he will ever be, but maybe there is potential for something special. Now let's check out the other pose, back double bicep. This one, I think both of these guys are looking amazing and they're kind of comparable. I'm not saying that Martin is going to achieve what Phil achieved in 2011, 2012, 2013. I'm not saying that. I'm not comparing really these guys right now. But I'm saying that there might be some potential for Martin to go in this direction. The direction of Phil Heath. Martin also has wide shoulders, unlike Phil. So in some of these shots, I'm not even sure who wins. I think I'd give this one to Martin. But again, this is a very young Phil Heath. Later, of course, he got huge. And maybe Martin will do the same. Guys, again, he's only 27. He's only 27 years young. So imagine what he would look like in a couple of years, in like two, three, or five, six years, if he is really devoted. Like, there is a lot of potential there. Now, I wasn't sure should I even post this one because, I mean, Phil Heath is pretty much killing everybody in that insane most muscular. I mean, the guy's arms don't belong to his body. Like, that's how crazy his proportions were. You can't compare this to Martin Fitzwater. No, no. Not even chest and not even legs, let alone arms and just the flow of the whole pose. There is a reason for why Phil Heath is the second best bodybuilder in the world in the history of bodybuilding. Uh, this is actually when he was much younger, but still, still you could see how blessed genetically he was. But in the end, the question is whether Martin can achieve anything remotely similar to what Phil Heath achieved. Because he has pretty much what Phil had. Like, he has that fullness, he can come in shredded, he has a good back, a really, really good back, and he has that bubbly look. And once again, he's only 27, so... If he continues at this pace, if he keeps progressing and getting more matured, maybe more detailed, 
maybe add some tissue some places in a couple of years in two three years i can see this guy at the top of the mr olympia i can see him battling against darren clansford and Harry japan because why not what is he really lacking again it's all about how fast he progresses if he shows up like this then yeah top 10 at the mr olympia is fair but if he keeps getting better and better like samson for example i can see martin climb up all the way to the top if you guys disagree with me you can tell me down below if you guys enjoyed this video however you can give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more content like this guys just please subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching see you soon all the best and bye bye